think it's very crucial to um, students being successful, feeling successful. I think it um, all the understanding kind of hinges upon that. I think it's really important though to develop a rapport with your students. I kind of see it as a mutualistic thing, not so much me giving them feedback, they've got to give me feedback. And if they're not comfortable to give me that feedback, I can only go so, so far. So that's one thing that I really, really try to impress upon them is it's a two-way street here. I need you and you need me. I'm taking classes now so I relate to them, you know, I've got a teacher I'm struggling with, it's a really hard um, concept. What do I do? I've got friends in class, I've got these resources, it's still not enough. How do I be a student? So it absolutely, it's, you cannot take it for granted that they know how to give feedback. That's definitely a skill that's got to be taught. It's got to be non-negative, and so again, that goes back to the rapport that, you know, we're in this together, we're learning, we're learning something that's difficult. So a lot of times it's not, this is right, this is wrong, but it's more of a constructive feedback. And it's also important to get feedback from the students because a lot of times you may be teaching for years, and you have a student who's thinking about something in a completely different way, and it completely makes sense how they're misconstructing this concept. You've never thought about it. You may understand the research, you may be a very experienced, so again, it's important that they're giving you feedback as well. And then again, of course, the teacher giving them feedback. Pattern analysis is important in reteaching because it provides um, feedback in terms of where students are having trouble, what the pitfalls are, what needs to be reevaluated, what needs to be retaught. Um, so within that, you may have small group um, lessons that you need to reteach, or it may need, may need to be a whole group. So sometimes students are working independently, I'll be going around, sometimes it may be one problem in particular. I stop the whole class, we look at that one problem, we talk about it, we answer any questions, and then, all right, continue on. Sometimes it may be a whole lesson. They missed the crucial part back in the beginning, I went too fast, I assumed they knew more than they knew whatever it may be, there weren't the proper questions asked, I thought they were on the right track, clearly that's not the case. So we stop, we look at it, we understand it, and then we move forward. And then sometimes your small groups, 80% of the class, the majority understands that there's a few that you need to just pull in together, sit down, have a small group conversation with them. Sometimes that lasts for a while, sometimes it's a few moments, and they're reintegrated back into the group. My second period was struggling, so we had to stop and we had to look, relook at an issue again, and it may be the next day it may be a flip-flop. So there's different reasons why that can happen. Sometimes even though it's the same content, you may have stronger um, students in a, a period or not as strong in another period. Or you may have a student who poses a certain question that gets the ball rolling for the class and that really helps. Every day is different. So um, it's not you cannot assume because first period got it, that second period got it, third and down the line. You've got to pretty much assume from the start that um, it's brand new, but you can use that positively. So if you know first period really struggled here and you saw this come up again and again and again, you recognize that pattern, then I usually start off second period really emphasizing, really driving home that point, really making sure, are we all with me? We good? All right, let's move on. So that kind of does help throughout the day. I mean, I know first period is kind of a guinea pig, but as you progress forward, you kind of pull from each period what they, what they had. Part of this, I think, is experience, but if you can feel generally the majority of the students, when I say majority, I'd say for me that's 50%, maybe even a little less, that's enough that constitutes reteach. Because even if enough people understand it, seeing it again obviously is not going to hurt. Um, so it's kind of, as you're going around, you can hear conversations with students, you can, you can sense either language that they're using, certain spots that they're getting hung up. Um, is where I figure out what needs to be retaught, whether it's a whole group or a class. And then also too, if you preview the material, teaching enough, understanding the research, the pitfalls, you know this is the misconception that's most prevalent with this content. For me, a lot of that is collaborating with our math department. So again, it's not necessarily at the end of the road once we've given our competencies. Um, even though I try to do to do that, I also look within um, 
the, the, the periods, so as, as a group, how they're progressing. And again, some sections are harder, so you kind of understand they're going to have more difficulties. But one thing is collaborating with the math department. So we'll get together and say, this went really, really well. This is what I did. This went terribly. This is what I did. What can I do? And so you may find that other teachers have that same experience or they had a little different experience. And so then you collaborate with them and then kind of figure out what worked, what didn't work, what can we change, where were the spots that they were having trouble. And just that constant communication and comparison with uh, the other teachers really helps me.